Doc on the Run. We help injured runners run. In this session, I'm going to explain to you about whether or not it's a good idea and how you might be able to run with a stress fracture in the heel bone. All right, the first thing to think about is like, what is a stress fracture in the heel bone? So the heel bone is an irregular bone. You know, it's an odd shape. It's not tubular. It's not square. It's, it's, um, it's very thin on the outside and it's sort of squishy on the inside. It's kind of like a sponge. It's really analogous actually to a hard boiled egg. A hard boiled egg has a hard shell on the outside and if you drop it, it cracks, but it doesn't really deform. And that's usually what happens with a heel bone when it actually fractures. If you drop it hard enough, it'll completely explode and the shell bursts outward in a bunch of little pieces. And then we have to go and try to put it back together. So what we do is we actually put a plate and a whole bunch of screws to suck all those pieces together, but it is never perfect. It is never the same again. And a stress, uh, like a real fracture in the heel bone like that where it exploded is no good. My grandfather actually had one of those when my little brother got a rocket that you pump up and shoot up in the air. You, know, you fill it up with water, pump it up, and it shoots up in the air. Of course, we went over to my grandparents' house to show it to him, and it landed on the roof. My grandfather climbed up on the roof, and when he was getting down, stepping off the ladder, the ladder came out from under him, and I remember seeing him and can still visualize him actually moaning in pain there on the uh, walkway where he landed. I thought he broke his leg. A few weeks later, he actually took a, me and my little brother to the circus, and um, interestingly, I remember him being on crutches, and he had a cast, and I actually thought he broke his leg. Many years later, um, I was actually in practice. I had done surgery on someone to fix a fracture of the heel bone when this guy fell out of a tree while he was cutting down a limb, and I was explaining to her what I did. She said, oh, that's what happened to your grandpa. Well, the interesting thing was that she said, actually, after that happened to him, she said he never again took another step without pain. So two things that are interesting about that. One was that I still find it fascinating that I never knew that, that he never one time complained about that pain. I mean, he was a tough guy. You know, he was, um, you know, very strong, uh, strong willed, and he didn't let that bother him. He didn't let it slow him down. He walked five miles a day well into his 80s. So he was very active and it didn't stop him from doing what he wanted to do. But as my grandmother said, it always bothered him. So the first thing is that you don't want to wind up in that scenario. You don't want to run on a stress fracture until it explodes and then have pain the rest of the time that you're trying to run. You don't want to do that for the rest of your life. So you have to take it seriously. Most metatarsal stress fractures, by comparison, they heal faster. Well, they don't heal faster, but they're structurally more stable than the heel bone. The heel bone, when it breaks apart, it's catastrophic. It's very difficult to fix. A metatarsal stress fracture, if you break it and you crack the bone and you run on it and the bone twists and moves out of place, we can still actually put the bone back. We can move it back into position, put a plate and screws on it, and it will heal in a way that you should be able to continue to run without any long-term problems. That's not really true of the heel bone. With the heel bone, if it explodes, it can, it can disrupt the subtalar joint that's underneath your ankle joint. That's where all the pronation and supination happens. You can really cause a lot of damage if you blow your heel bone apart. So you have to take it seriously. Now, because this is a serious thing, many people want to get it evaluated with an MRI or a CT scan or something like that. And that is much better than x-rays. So on x-rays, not a lot shows up. Sometimes you can see a little crack, but that's highly unlikely. What most people think they're gonna see is this huge crack that's sort of curving around the heel bone, that they'll see that on an x-ray, but that's not what usually shows up. It's very subtle. It's a lot easier to see on an MRI. Now, one time I actually was seeing a runner. She was actually a doctor, so uh, she knew the severity of this. She knew how risky it was. And I said, look, you know, I looked at her. She thought she had chronic plantar fasciitis. She didn't have chronic plantar fasciitis, so after evaluating her and checking her, just doing the simple tests that we do to tell whether or not you do or do not have a stress fracture in the heel bone. I was like, look, I really think you have a stress fracture in the heel bone. And she's like, oh, are you sure? I mean, I think it's just plantar fasciitis. I said, look, I think it's really a stress fracture in the heel bone. And since you don't believe me, why don't we get an MRI so that you can confirm that you really do have this much more significant, much riskier problem? She said, okay. So she gets you know, scheduled for the MRI and then I was gonna go see her she got the MRI and we were meeting that day in the late afternoon. And when I saw her, I said, how are you feeling? She said, it's pretty sore today. And I said, why? She said, well, I ran 16 miles earlier today. What? 16, you ran 16 miles today. Why did you do that? She said, well, I, I knew that you were going to tell me to not run. So I wanted to try to fit in one more long run, which was crazy. So 
I mean, it's, I was like, well, I should report you for malpractice or something. This seems nuts. You know, you went for a 16 mile run when you just got an MRI because you think you have a stress fracture in the heel bone. Fortunately for her, it didn't blow apart and, and it didn't really cause any permanent damage. So she got away with that run. So the first thing is like, if you say, can you run with a stress fracture in the heel bone? The short answer is probably you could, but it's very, very risky. So she did it and got away with it. You do not want to run until you blow it apart. So, you know, you have to think about how important is it to run and how damaged is it? Where is it along that continuum? Like, is it just inflamed and kind of swollen within the heel bone? Is it really damaged? Is it really tender? Is it really swollen? Is it bruised? You know, you have to figure out how far along your injury is to determine whether or not it's worth it to run. And once you think about those things, the key here is how important is it to you to run? You know, if you've been training for a year and you finally got into Ironman Hawaii, well, truthfully, for me personally, I would do it. It took me 10 years to get into Ironman Hawaii. So I would still do the race. Most doctors would say that's crazy. I know the risk, but I really wanted to do Ironman Hawaii for a very, very long time. So, you know, if you decided, okay, you really want to do a marathon, you only want to do one, and you've been training really, really hard, and you've been training for many, many months, and the stress fracture is not really that severe, you might want to do some stuff to back off and let it heal a little bit and then still do the race and still be okay. You could do that. One of the main advantages of a stress fracture in the heel bone is the heel bone has a great blood supply. It heals faster than any other bone in your body. So when you do get a heel bone stress fracture, you can feel confident that you have to be off of it a lot less time than it would take even for a metatarsal stress fracture to heal. So because of the good blood supply, because of its healing potential, if you're diligent about taking the pressure and removing the stress away from that heel bone, it can improve really quickly. So that's a huge advantage. You can get it to heal quickly. There are also some other tricks you can do to get it to heal faster too, while you're trying to make this decision about whether or not you should run. But the key here is that it's not gonna take two months for the thing to heal, it'll heal quickly. Now, if you have a subtle stress fracture, it may just take a week or two to get it to heal to the point that you can continue training and running. And then during that period where you're decreasing your running, you can do other stuff to maintain your core fitness, maintain your glutes, your quads, do all these other things to try to supplement your running fitness so that you can better protect and better stabilize your foot when you run so you do apply less stress to the heel bone when you run. So there are lots of strategies to try to mitigate the forces to the heel bone. And the main thing though, of course, is to try to maintain your running fitness and try to stop running for the lowest amount of time if you stop running at all. So you have to take it seriously. You have to really think about what the problem is. You have to think about how bad it is. You have to think about what your goal is. Then you have to go to your doctor and explain all that. So here's a couple of scenarios. Let's say you got a stress fracture in the heel bone and you're a year out from your key race. Okay, so if you just qualified for Ironman Hawaii, your foot hurts, you thought it was plantar fasciitis, you go get an MRI or you check it the way that I show you in the runner's heel pain course and you decide, okay, no, I definitely have a stress fracture in the heel bone. This is definitely not plantar fasciitis. Well, then you know, okay, you have a whole year. So you do not want to wind up cracking your heel bone and winding up with problems that sideline your training for months over the course of that year leading up to your key race. In that scenario, I would say, I think you should be very aggressive about getting this to heal. I think you should do everything to make it heal, you know, in terms of nutritional supplements, really monitoring your nutrition, um, really, really making sure you're sleeping and hydrating, doing everything you can to support the healing process and just basically take the time off for the short term it, whether that's crutches or a fracture walking boot or whatever to maximally speed the healing initially to get it jump started so that you can wrap up the healing process and then still have you know 10 or 11 months to really train hard for your key race when you have a year and you get a stress fracture in the heel bone i think that makes the most sense because you don't want to monkey around with it months later you want to get that over with right now the next scenario would be if you have let's say four months before your key race you know, you've been training a lot, you still have some key build phases in there where you really want to build some more fitness, but you get a stress fracture. Okay, well, in that case, then you have to decide. There's basically two ways to go with this. One of them is to really treat it aggressively, take a little bit of time off in terms of either not running or immobilizing it, offloading it, whatever, you know, using crutches or something for a very short period of time to really jumpstart the healing and then resume your training or you could try to see if you can get away with a lot more activity 
and then see how you're doing for your race. Now that, that second idea is riskier. So you gotta talk about that very closely with your doctors. That's mainly what I do when I talk to runners that have these problems in a, in a virtual doctor visit. You know, we try to figure out, okay, is it worth the risk or not? Is it, is it better for you to like do some stuff to maintain a lot of running fitness at the risk of not having it completely healed before your race? Or is it better to take a little bit of time and get it to really heal quickly and then resume your training, but then actually figure out some strategies to try to supplement all that running fitness so you don't really lose your running fitness while you're not quote unquote running on it during that initial period of just a couple of weeks or something. So you have to really be thoughtful about that, particularly when you're about four months out from the race. The last scenario we'll talk about is if you're four weeks out from your race. This is worse. This is what happens to most runners. It's like they think they have plantar fasciitis and they're ignoring it. It doesn't really hurt that bad. It kind of hurts when they're running. It kind of bugs them. They don't really notice any bruising. They don't really think it's swollen. They just know it's a little bit bothersome and they think it's plantar fasciitis because all their running buddies have told them it's probably plantar fasciitis if you have heel pain. So you keep training, you keep running. It's getting a little worse over time, but you know, you don't really notice that it's getting that much worse and suddenly it's really kind of achy when you're running. Now you're about four, four weeks out. You know, you're really right, right at the end of your training. You, you, know, you have a few more long runs, a few more speed sessions, but truthfully, you're like almost at maximum race fitness. This is really scary to runners because you're like, okay, great. You, know, you go see a doctor and they say, well, you have a stress fracture in the heel bone. You can't run for six weeks. You can't do anything. You need to use crutches or something for a month or six weeks. And that's devastating because this is right when you're like, really, really, you've put in so much effort, so much time. And you want to know, is this really necessary or not? Well, it's not always necessary. Again, you know, you've got a lot of fitness at this point. You're not going to lose it all in four weeks, particularly if you're strategic about what exercises you do, how you do them, and do them in a way that doesn't put any more stress on the heel bone, then you can probably maintain all that running fitness, heal the stress fracture enough that you can get through your race without having it blow apart. You just have to talk to a doctor who's actually going to sit down with you and consider those variables and understand that this race is really important, that you really want to do this race. You've got to tell them, look, I'm going to do this race. Okay, I want to do this race. Your job is not to tell me to not run. Your job is to help me figure out what can I do to heal this thing as fast as possible? What can I do to reduce the stress so that it will heal while I do these other things to maintain my fitness? And what are the other things I can do to maintain my fitness so that I can actually show up in the race in four weeks with the thing healed enough that it's not going to blow apart? and stable enough that I can do the race without so much pain that it distracts me and hopefully still achieve my goal time. If you do all those things, then yes, you can run with a stress fracture in the heel bone. You just have to decide, is it worth a risk or not? You can do anything you want. You just have to be prepared to pay the consequences. That's true of all these scenarios. If you're going to sit on crutches for six weeks and wear a cast for six weeks, you're going to have to pay the consequences. You're going to have permanent stiffness and weakness and uh, osteopenia where the other bones are actually at more at risk of developing stress fractures later. And you're going to have a whole uh, sort of increased risk of all these other overuse injuries later just from the treatment that was prescribed for your heel bone. Nothing's free in medicine. For everything that you do, there's a risk and a benefit. But there is no benefit without risk, unfortunately, with most of the stuff doctors tell you to do. So you have to decide, you know, are you willing to pay the consequences? Are you willing to miss your race? Are you willing to use crutches for six weeks? Are you willing to have a little bit of risk while you try to maintain your fitness and then monitor it very closely and provide more feedback going back and forth with your doctor and your coach to see if that's going to work or not? You just have to decide what's right for you. The whole key when you have a stress fracture, whether it's a metatarsal stress fracture or a heel, heel bone stress fracture, you know, which we call a calcaneal stress fracture, is to really communicate carefully and be thoughtful about what your most important goal is and then figure out the fastest way to get it to heal and the best way to maintain your running fitness while it heals. If you do that, you can still stray, stay on track with all your running goals. Doc on the Run. We help injured runners run.